So, I'm on stage in front of all of you today to discuss the topic of discrimination. Seeing as this is a somewhat heavy topic, I've been instructed by my wonderful coaches to keep the content light and relatable. So, in the spirit of being relatable, I have an aunt. I can assume that many of you can relate to that. Of course, depending on the average age of people in this room, I may be wrong. But you all look very youthful, so I think we're okay. <laughs> My point is that there is this wonderful woman who, for better or for worse, doesn't have a husband. She doesn't have a wife, either. But being this incredible aunt, around a decade ago, she decided that, spouse or not, she was ready to have a baby. I know that I may be considered biased when saying this, but that woman is one of the most sweet, nurturing people I have ever met. And there have actually been times where I have wished she was my mother. <laughs> of course, after that, I finally picked my clothes from my bedroom floor, and me and my actual mother reconciled. <laughs> and I accepted my familial status. The point is that this woman was a mother without a baby, which is why about three years after trying to take the adoption path, and of that not really panning out, she decided to try artificial insemination. So she went to the, all the necessary doctors, did all the necessary checkups, and she asked one of her closest friends if he would donate. He said yes, and everything seemed to be going to plan, until she went to the clinic to have her friend's frozen sperm inseminated inside of her, as one does, and they refused to allow her IVF treatment. Now, some of you may have understood what is going on here, but for those who are still in the dark, my aunt was denied IVF treatment in order to do AI from a donor whom she knew, because there was a possibility that she may have been a surrogate carrying for a gay couple. Absolutely horrifying, I know, how dare she? But that is the reality of the thing. When I first heard this story, I was infuriated and about a lot of things as well. My aunt being denied treatment was devastating enough, but the reason being a fear that she may have given the baby to a gay couple was so ridiculously stupid in my young mind that I actually started laughing. But growing up with a strong moral compass, something which I inherited from my parents, and being a proud LGBTQ plus member myself, I couldn't help but research this deep-rooted institutional discrimination faced by people because of their sexual orientation. So before moving on, I would actually like to define a word which has, it has come to my attention, used to be used as an insult, and that is the word queer. Well, <laughs> queer, is now adopted by the LGBTQ plus community to, well, it's more of an umbrella term. And the actual definition of queer is slightly unusual or peculiar. Something which I find quite beautiful because even though someone may be slightly unusual, that still doesn't mean that they're not an essential member of society, quite the contrary, actually. There is a lot one could say when talking about discrimination regarding sexual orientation. I could talk to you about gay rights, gay marriage. I could expand on my own story and tell you all about the difficulties and the obstacles faced by same-sex couples when trying to adopt or conceive. But it has been made very clear to me that, being young, I'm at a disadvantage, and a group of adults, primarily, such as yourselves, couldn't care less about what I have to say regarding real-life problems. But, I also have some knowledge regarding the subject, and that is regarding the discrimination faced by queer youth and its consequences, something which I doubt many 50-year-olds in here know better than I do. So, being young, although it may put me at a disadvantage, still makes me realize the discrimination faced by these people. If 50% of the population, of the queer youthful population, is seriously considering committing suicide, something is definitely wrong. 50%. I'm just gonna let that sink in for a second. Why? 
Maybe their parents didn't accept them, their school, social media, society. Maybe they felt ashamed, alone, damaged, depressed because they were queer. Yeah, well, discrimination based on someone's sexual orientation is indisputably an issue. I think I've made that an accurate like, point. And the only question that you guys need to be asking yourselves now is what can I do to help? Because we do need your help. Already there has been some kind of social media community formed for those who feel isolated and alone and far from any sense of belonging. But that on its own is not enough. Systems need to go in place, and not only government in force, but in schools as well. I may not have talked about transgender youth specifically, but they are of utmost importance, and preventing their exclusion from school clubs, as well as, stop, as, well as educating others to prevent bullying is of the utmost importance. It's essential, essential for the well-being of these people, people who at least once in their lives have made to feel inadequate, have been told that something about their existence, if not their whole existence, is wrong. Forced into shame instead of embracing their true, beautiful selves. I'm privileged enough to, have, to be going to a progressive school, a school where people feel comfortable to be themselves. Teachers teach queer literature in their after-school clubs and students accept and encourage each other to be who they are. Um, actually, that is not always the case. One of my friends was informed, was actually clearly instructed not to dress too gay when going to a party because of who might be there. My ex-girlfriend had to remove the necklace I had given her every day before going back to her house because she lived in fear of her conservative parents finding out that she was one of those disgusting gays, as they had phrased it, and they have phrased it in more colorful ways than that as well. Another ex called me laughing one day to tell me that she was at a psych ward <laughs> and that what she found so hilarious was that every single person in there was queer. That is not really funny. What I'm trying to say is that the world is improving step by step. It would be irrational to demand a perfectly accepting society overnight. Change takes time. But it's also the result of a collective effort to make life easier on those who face discrimination, just solely based on who they love. Which is why I have to urge you to think twice before speaking, no matter whether you mean it or not, and to educate yourselves and others on the subject. We don't all agree on everything, but what kind of society would we live in if we harassed each other into killing ourselves every time there was a dispute? Now, some of you may be wondering whatever happened to my aunt, and if she ever did get that baby. Well, the truth is she didn't. But that's okay. We don't always get our way. Life is not always the way we predict it's going to be, or the way we want it to be. But that is even more a reason to make it the greatest we can, both for us and for those around us. Finally, I'd like to say a big thank you. Because even though you yourselves may not realize it right now, just by sitting here and listening to this 10 to 15 minute speech, you have proved yourselves to be allies. And that is something that I will forever be grateful for. Thank you very much.